demonstrated already on the right ear because of that autosclerosis with good success. At that time, I put in a 0.4 millimeter um, smart piston. And um, yeah, the, what you would expect, everything looks normal with, uh, when you look inside um, the ear. And uh, this is the audiogram. You can see the left side um, has quite a big air bone gap. And actually, I think that's not her speech. Uh, that's another, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so this is, uh, this is her speech at uh, tone audiogram. And um, I have already started. And um, I have already opened up. Maybe we can switch to the microscope now. Yeah, that's a nice view. Can you see the ear? Yeah, it's a good view. Okay, I have just opened actually the, uh, the eardrum and um, you can see the corda. I'm just doing the posterior canal plasty now. And um, so maybe, this is a bit the boring part. I don't know if you want to switch to somebody else in that time. No, we'll it's all right. We don't, we don't mind seeing you sweat. It's, uh, <laughs> we've, we've talked quite a lot today about curetting because we okay. regard it as one of the skills that uh, trainees had to develop, and especially their muscles. You have to do it regularly to develop the muscles in your thumbs, the thinner muscles. So it's a good idea to use a curette for most surgery, just just maybe for five minutes during an operation, just to develop those that movement that Alex is doing there. Can you see it's a sort of a, a scooping movement, like scooping ice cream, not to, not a scraping movement. Then it's okay, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think it's it's um, much safer than uh, than using a drill. One and the other thing is also it, you don't have to set up a drill for the just this very short period of time that you need it. And then I take as much bone off so that I can actually see the facial nerve and the pyramidal process. And uh, of course, preserving the corda. Sugi? So this is interesting is you, you hear all of the state piece surgeons making the same comment that they need to see the facial nerve and the pyramid. And if you can't see the facial nerve and the pyramid, you don't have enough access. And also, if you can't see the facial nerve and the pyramid, and you're not using a smart prosthesis, you have to crimp, you will not be able to get the crimper in at the end of the operation. So it's a very important point. So I noticed, Alex, you have a ceiling-mounted microscope, which is uh, very good. I didn't, I didn't hear you. I noticed you have a roof-mounted microscope. No, it's not. My, isn't it? It's a, like it's a, okay, no, it's a, it's a, it's a Pentero. Oh, right. It's, it's just on a big, a big boom. Yeah, okay. And now here, it's not quite clear where it goes through. I have to be careful here. So it's a little bit peculiar. Can I not clean it, huh? Little bit because the corda here seems to make a, a curve. Now, of course, well, it's interesting. We were on Chris Aldrin's course last week, and the the observation that most of the otologists were making that if you do a stapes operation and the patient gets a good hearing result but poor taste sensation, they don't really complain. But if you do a stapes operation and they get poor taste sensation with a poor hearing result, they get very, very upset. I agree. So it's almost done here. And um, it looks like there is good access for the middle ear this time. So, so, almost done. 
I think we British, British look, that we British that look at your Swiss and the European curettes with a certain degree of jealousy. Um, is that they they seem to be a lot sharper than the English ones. <laughs> Well, okay, I think... Because we're broke, you have all our money. That's... <laughs> yeah, that's because we're so careful with the curettes. Okay, let me see. That's the Grüne um, Suge, bitte. And, um... So... We can see now the... Stapes... And the Incas nicely. And I will now just open this mucosa part here so we have a good access, good view onto the state piece and onto the incus. So here we can see the pyramidal process. I just open all these mucosa parts. I think that's very important so that you have good access, obviously. Good. And now, so can I have a little bit more? Okay. Seems like big enough here to put the point six prosthesis in afterwards. It's a little bit higher. Normal higher is 0.5. Voilà. Okay. So you can nicely see the footplate. Yeah, we've got pretty good view. Actually. The state good view. is completely yes, nice fixed. View. Completely fixed. And um, so what I'll do now is I go and cut the incudacepedial joint. Excuse me, I have to move the microscope. So. Okay. And there, of course, we have to be very careful not to not to move too much the incus. So. Okay. That's nice. And now let's see. And when the eyes come off over Hercule, so the Incas moves nice, also the Amaras. Okay, good. And then what I always do is I cut, laser off there a bit, zwei. I cut the, um, the tendon and the cross using the laser. And I'm using a diet, a pulse diet. A uh, solid state li laser? No, it's, it's interesting that you say you cut the tendon with the laser because you, I do as well, but I think you and I are in the minority. Uh, although Robert uses the laser for everything else, he uses a micro scissors for the, uh, for the tendon, and I'm never sure why, because I think the laser works very well. And we'll yes, discuss this. We can discuss this later in the case discussions. It stops the bleeding, actually. So. Not in this case, though. <laughs> okay. So, and then I also cut the posterior cross with the laser. And what's your power setting on your diode laser? Yes. And the good thing is it also stops the bleeding. What's the power setting? It's now on 2 watts. Um, 0.1 second, which makes makes it um, 200 millijoules. Voila. And now I try to see if I can see the anterior cross as well. Must no come of oil There is a mucosa over it, which I take off first, and then. We'll see if we can. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Does not look. It's not so easy to see, but I can just 
see it on the edge. I don't know. Can you see it in microscope? Uh, in the laser? Can you see yeah. it in the screen? Yes. So I will just give a few shots on the interior cross just to make sure that it's thinned out just a little bit before I. Good. It's the ice cream of Eiffel. And then I break it off and go back to this other view. And then I can nicely take it out. I think it's important to at least try to cut the interior across. Now, in some cases, if there is not a very strong fixation, you have some risk of actually getting a floating foot plate. Yeah, this one won't come out. Okay. Good. And now, I always measure. I think it's important to measure the length. Can I have a mask out of it? Now, you've got, a pretty, you've got a pretty good field here, but it's just oozing a little bit of uh, blood. What's the, uh, the patient's under general anesthetic? What's the systolic blood pressure? It's, uh, um, blood pressure is now, what is it? 82 on 50. That's really interesting because all four patients that we've asked about the blood pressure today have been very close to that. So, top marks to the anesthetist all around. It's ice coma for rift, this laser bit. Now, what I'll do next is um, I've measured, so it's going to be 4.5, and there is good, in, a good, good enough size to put the 0.6 prosthesis inside, laser. So, what I'll do is I'll make a few. Uh, I make a few shots on the foot plate. I'll try to be a little bit posterior, uh, posterior inferior from the center. Is it the same setting or do you go down to one watt for the foot plate? 0.5 actually. And that's the um, normal channel, the laser. And also, we notice a flash. You, you presume you have a shutter for your eye, so you don't see that green flash. No, I have actually um, I have a, uh, a filter. So now it's open. And now I use the austere step. Um, Punkt sieben, bitte. This is the BNA drill. And the prosthese 0,7 mal, uh, 0,6 mal 4,5. And I use the austere step to make now a nice and round. Hold to the stay piece. Just uh, need to put the, the drill. Sometimes it's, not a, so it's, easy a wonderful, it's a wonderful drill, but you really need to make sure, don't you, that the burr is in the end. It's, uh, I find it quite difficult to make sure. Yeah, it's actually, sometimes I have difficulties to put it in, like today. But that's and not. That's not just you. I find that as well. I find it's a fantastic drill, but just this bit is a problem. And I don't know why, but now it really does not want to go in for some reason, which I don't understand. I'm sorry for the delay, but I actually need the drill. Okay, sometimes if you take it right out and just put a little bit of fluid on, so uh, now it's now it's good. Okay. All right. So what I'll do is now I make a little hole without any pressure. And that's it. So the next step is actually from a prothesis, huh? I would like to show you the Prosthesis I use. I don't know if everybody is familiar with the nit nitty bond 
prosthesis, which is this one here. Darf ich mal das 1,5 Häkli haben? So, let me show you just one second, a little bit better view. So, so this is the actual prosthesis here. It's made of uh, a nitinol top here. This, uh, these two stoppers actually prevent it from closing. And this is uh, pure titanium. And you notice that there is a second um, prosthesis to calibrate your laser. You can open that up. And now I know I'm going to need 1.5, but I just can show you how that actually works. Um, because normal the eyes come off over. Um, in this prosthesis, you have this particular shape, which has four distinct points of um, contact, which is uh, these four, one, two, three, four. And then you have um, some three thermoactive points here. These one, two, three, these are thermoactive. So if you heat this point, the prosthesis will close. And I'll show you that here. Oops, I touched it, I'm sorry. But uh, it will still work. So if I uh, come out of 0,5, if I now go to 0.5 watts, 0,5, yeah, 0,5. Okay, it's already a couple of now. I the Now, what you see also is actually the fiber of the laser has actually melted in the front. Therefore, sometimes you need to check. It's the laser. You see, that's not enough. And that's of ice come of oil. You can go higher. And you see also it opens up again if it's not enough. And now I'm going to 1.5. And you see, now it's closing. One, two, and three. So it is completely closed now, as you see. And give me um, all As you can see here, um, the thermoactive points are not in contact with the incas, so that you have a like a thermal blocking zone, which um, which prevents uh, the mucosa or the bone, if you use the laser, from being damaged. And also these, um, these little ears, if you want to call them like that, they have the spring zones in here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So independent of the size of the incus, you will have the same pressure on the incus. And um, that's, that's an advantage. And also these open, so open zones will allow the mucosa to um, uh, be, tra be uh, transfunded with um, uh, with uh, the vessels. It's a Schwarzes Tangle Now what I'll do is, there is also a little, like an appendix that you can see here in advance, uh, in the front, and you can use that to put it onto the incus when you park the prosthesis. And now you have to take it rather in a um, sharp angle. Now I switch back with the microscope. Excuse me. Uh, try to find the hole. There it is. Okay. And now Putting the prosthesis into this little stapedotomy. So, uh, 0,5. And um, nehme ich noch den ganz feinen Sugi. Okay. Ja. Yeah. Ja, yeah, ich hätte gerne den ganz feinen. Ups. So, not quite. So now one of the nice things is that you don't move the incus. Mm. Yeah.
0,5 nochmal. Okay, now place it again. Now you really see me sweating. Okay. It's his eyes. Uh. So now it's inside, but it's under the corridor, which is unfortunate. Shit. Yeah. Eyes come forward. Okay. Now the prosthesis is nicely inside. It's on the incus already, but not in the right position. So I take it a little bit down. Okay. It's not so easy with the corda. Voila. This seems to be the perfect position. Jetzt den schwarzen Suge bitte und den Laser wieder bereit machen. Now I use the laser and I go from anterior to posterior by firstly activating the anterior thermoactive zone laser. Not so easy to have to admit. So, well, I won. And now I try. Yeah, it looks uh, fine. As I no come off over hurtly. And now you can see the prosthesis is fixed well. I'll just show you. Maybe a bit out of focus. Good. This looks like a perfect fit. And now I can see the it is nicely in the in the state pedotomy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's impressive. We're impressed by that, and it's. Uh, I think you did well to avoid the corda, um, which was in the way, really, wasn't it? But, uh, we don't worry Absolutely. quite so much about the corda with UK cuisine as you do with. Uh, uh, Swiss and French cuisine. <laughs> and Jeremy Lady would say he, he never damages them, but I'm afraid in Burton on Trent they occasionally get damaged. <laughs> Let me just ask you, uh, Alex, about the corda. I mean, it's a question that may come up in the discussion later. But what's your feeling if you stretch a corda? Do you prefer to leave it or cut it? Yeah, I prefer to leave it actually. Although I know that um, that the patients have more more problems if uh, if you stretch it than if you cut it but um, I just I just actually have difficulties just to to take it off um, in case of uh, because um, usually the patient recover well it just takes a while um, sometimes it can take up to three months I think but they recover almost all of them no, I'd agree with that, but I, I think three months is maybe even a little under, underestimate. Sometimes I've had patients who've taken longer than that. But certainly in my series, I've only really had two or three patients who've complained of long-term taste disturbance. But as I said, if, if one of those is the patient that doesn't get the good hearing result, then it becomes more of a problem. So very important in the consenting uh, process for the trainees and young people.
colleagues who are listening. Thanks very much. That was a very nice demonstration. Would you just like to tell us a little bit about your post-operative management? Yeah, so the, uh, this is an outpatient. Um, so the, um, I put two stitches in now, and I put some packing in, and I removed that after 7 to 14 days. And then um, after that, I give the patient some drops, and I um, inform them not to make any pressure into the ear, so when they sneeze, they have to open their mouth, and uh, if they... Um, uh, um, they uh, should avoid to, to make pressure, and then they should avoid actually water getting in. I will on And uh, finally, for six weeks, they're not allowed to fly and lift heavy weights more than 10 kilograms. Good. That's, I think that's very similar advice to most of us. I think I say four weeks. And I would imagine as well in Switzerland, you don't like them going through any train tunnels at high speed. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, thank you.